<laughs> what he wants me to tell people. Good evening. I would like to welcome everybody to a special Board of Selectmen meeting tonight. Uh, this is March 30th, 2023. I call the meeting to order at 6.02 p.m. Um, immediately, for those watching at home, immediately following this, the Budget Board will have their meeting and they will uh, be going over the FY24 budget. So please stick around and watch that. Um, the first order. We need the budget board to open because they're going to take action on this. Okay. Article. All right. Well, April, would you please open the budget board meeting? I will. I'll call the budget board meeting to order. We have uh, 10 people here and one on Zoom. Michelle Powell is on Zoom. So. Great. And we need to recognize that Alan is. Oh, yes. And Alan is on Zoom down in sunny Florida this evening. Oh, poor baby. Can you hear us, Alan? I, know. <laughs> I hear you fine. Great. Great. Thanks. Okay, so the only item on the select board's uh, agenda this evening is authorization of purchase and sale agreement contingent upon town meeting approval for map 29 lot 1-3. And what this is, is this is a golden opportunity for the town of Kennebunkport to purchase an area where we can have a public boat launch. You know, currently in Kennebunkport, there are no public launches, contrary to popular belief. The boat launch on the causeway in Cape Horpus is privately owned. We do have an agreement, and the folks at Stonehaven Hill are good enough to um, allow the town to use that in limited capacity. Um, this would be an opportunity for the town to own its own boat launch. And this one is uh, very special because it, it you can put a, a large commercial fishing boat as well as your 13-foot Boston whaler in there on a, on a decent run of tide. Um, and that really is the only place in Cape Horpus that you can do that. Uh, the Moonies have owned this property for many, many generations. I was fortunate enough to know Louise's mother and father. They were close family friends. My grandparents lived across the street. And the town approached them uh, about a year ago and began negotiations on this piece of property. And, uh, you know, there's been a lot of back and forth, but we've reached an agreement, which is, of course, why we're here this evening. Um, this particular agreement uh, will not change the mill rate of the town. Uh, if the taxpayers agree to purchase this property, uh, we will take it out of what fund did we say? Capital reserve. Capital, I was going to say contingency. Capital reserve um, fund. So the money, the town already has the money. We just need the approval of the voters to expend it. Now, John Dykstra has done a great deal of work on this project. I, I created a committee, well, I, the Board of Selectmen created a, a subcommittee um, to study boat ramps in Kennebunkport. And they had to say it was an exhaustive list would be an understatement. Uh, how many did you have, John? Like Seventeen. Seventeen. And, I mean, they looked at places, as a lifelong resident, I didn't even know existed as boat ramps. And this was determined to be the best and really the only spot uh, in Cape Orpus that would meet the needs of the commercial fishermen and the residents alike. So, John, do you have anything to add? Is yeah, I do. In fact, I've got a little bit of a presentation. Thank you, Thank you John. People can really see where it, uh, where it is. Dave, let's go to the next slide. Um, I would like to just give a little background and a shout out to our committee. Uh, Ed said that I, no, I, you know, it's the, 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 the royal eye on this. We had a great committee. We have a great committee. Uh, we are still active, as I'll mention in a minute. Uh, a couple of the members are here uh, with us. Uh, Hartwell Blanchard is here. Uh, of course, Warner is here as well. Uh, Chip uh, Howarth is here, as well as Carol Morris. Uh, Richard Perry and, and Jeff Dent couldn't be with us this evening. And again, we were, uh, we were founded by the Board of Selectmen uh, in October uh, with the charter to identify areas either town-owned or privately owned that might be suitable for a boat launch. When I mentioned 17 areas, uh, indeed, those were areas that were town-owned or 
would possibly be suitable for uh, a boat launch that were privately owned. But none of the town-owned parcels were found to be suitable for a boat launch. So I'll show you that in a, in a minute. Uh, the next slide, please, Dave. So what we did is we uh, used the town GIS and some footwork uh, to go out and look at parcels that principally were town-owned parcels, uh, obviously, that were adjacent to the water. And, and that's the key piece. If you want a boat launch, well, you got to be near the water. And if you're near the water, there aren't a whole lot of places that are available in this neck of the woods. Uh, so the, uh, the criteria we used to say, you know, is it, is it something we want to look at? One, was it town owned? If it was town owned, we're going to look at it no matter what it was, because it's town owned. <coughs> and we'll see if we could make it work. Then we had to look at the tidal range. Was there enough throw in the tide, enough time with adequate tide, to be a reasonable boat launch? Uh, accessibility was important. Do you have to drive over private roads to get to it? Uh, are they uh, undeveloped, uh, you know, un, uh, unimproved roads, which would be a problem? Also, we needed areas that were sheltered from the ocean. There were a few. There's some down at, uh, at Cleves Cove, which uh, had plenty of space, but it's wide open ocean, not a place where you'd want to launch a boat. And then was there a potential for parking? Uh, this was particularly important for the kayak aspect. We, our charter is to look at both trailered boats and kayaks. So our intent was to try to find a place we could do both. And as you'll see, we, we failed to do that. We have to split it. Uh, and the parking was important for kayaks. Uh, and you'll see where we ended up for trailered boats. So the next, uh, the next slide, please. These are... Uh, 12 of the sites that were in Cape Porpoise. We have another four, as I'll show you in a moment, on the Kennebunkport River. And as you can see, we, we covered the gamuts of the sites. All but three of these are, uh, are, are town-owned parcels, and they're just little, little, little kind of little slivers, right away for the most part, that went down to the water, which made them uh, not appropriate, certainly, for a trailered boat. The next slide are the five along the Kennebunkport River. Uh, uh, Kennebunkport River, don't I wish. We'll call it the Kennebunk River. Uh, we own half of it, damn it. How'd they get the name? So, uh, so after the initial pass, uh, we, we decided that we really ought to focus on uh, uh, Cape Porpoise. And so we basically moved away from Kennebunkport, the Kennebunk River. The reason being, one, that there are several boat launch and kayak launch opportunities existing on the Kennebunk River. Uh, we also want to be sure, and we think it's important, that our, our Cape Porpoise uh, uh, fishing uh, community uh, has uh, access to a place to pull out and put in that's in, in Cape Porpoise uh, Harbor. Uh, and also the, 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 the pleasure, if it's especially for the kayak component, to have access to the Cape Orpus Islands. So we narrowed down to uh, a trailered boat ramp. We're still going to be in the process of trying to identify a kayak launch. That's a, a different issue that the committee is still working on. Uh, and so we've narrowed it down to a trailered boat launch and in the Cape Orpus Harbor. Uh, next slide, please. So uh, we looked at those 12 areas. And we scored each using this kind of a criteria. One, is it suitable for boat and or kayak? Uh, is, what's the access, good or bad? Uh, does it have access to the islands? Is there availability for parking? How is it owned? And then the tidal access, water conditions, i.e. the impact to the sea. DEP impact became an important one. Uh, several of the areas that had some potential were just an absolute no-go when it came to DEP. Uh, the the uh, control, and, and appropriately for those of us that are environmentally conscious, uh, just would not allow us to have done it. Uh, so several, several sites that were possible were thrown out for that reason. We also looked at potential building costs and a butter impact. We got all said and done. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, the site that was chosen, we call it Langsford Road 1. There was a 2. And that's that large town-owned property that's all marsh and wetlands, which uh, if you could pave it over, it'd be gorgeous. But 
and you're just not, and appropriately so, not going to pave it over. Uh, and the site is on the east side of Langsford Road. It's about a third of a mile from the Cape Porpoise Town Center. Uh, if you know town well, you'll also recognize that to be just exactly where the Langsford Road Lobster and Fish House is. So uh, uh, that is a significant factor in what is so. Let's take a look at the next slide. Here you see a close-up of, uh, of the property. Uh, you'll notice the existing boat ramp. This has been a boat ramp for generations. Uh, it has been uh, generously uh, uh, allowed town uh, access, uh, town residents, and our commercial fleet. Uh, uh, it was run by the Moonies presently. They're, they're doing that. Also, Louise's family uh, went back uh, uh, a generation or so with the same, uh, the same intent to have it be a, a public uh, access, although controlled. Uh, you'll notice there is a marine railway sitting right next to the property, as well as the uh, Langsford Lobster and Seafood, uh, which is uh, sitting adjacent as well. Uh, the next slide, please. So representing the uh, Boat Launch Committee, I brought forward a recommendation at, uh, at the committee's recommendation to the select board to investigate the purchase of the property uh, contingent on uh, voter approval in June. Uh, it's the town's intent that this will be managed and controlled for trailered boats only. Uh, there will be no parking allowed at the site. Mm. So it is to be run and managed as it is today as a dump and go or a fetch and go. But it is, uh, uh, there will be no parking of vehicle or trailer uh, allowed on the site or on Langsford Road uh, in large. Um, so we, we entered into negotiations. Uh, we negotiated a price of $275,000. Uh, and I am proposing, as in representing the committee, uh, that the uh, select board uh, accept this purchase uh, and the town's uh, the funds be drawn from the town capital reserve fund. As Ed mentioned, this would not have uh, a, an impact, a direct immediate impact on the uh, on our town mill rate. So that's uh, that's my presentation. Too. Thank you, John. John, there's just one clarification. Um, I think you said it, but people may not have picked up on it. In the photograph, the aerial photograph, the marine railway there, that is not part of the property. I mean, it was clearly delineated, but just in case. Well, if that I said that, I'm sorry. Yeah. No, no, it's okay, John. Um, that belongs to uh, the Langsford Road Lobster Company. Correct. So, Yes, Alan. Uh, is there any work that ne needs to be done to prepare the site uh, over and above what's already there? <coughs> It's not to say that there wouldn't be work, and there might not want to be future work as we look at it. It is an operational site now. It is secured, uh, and uh, there is no immediate need to do a significant amount of work, but uh, that would have to be looked at in the future. And there are no other deeded right-of-ways on that property uh, to other parties? Correct. There, yeah, there's no other deeded right-of-ways on that property. That is correct. Bob? How is it going to be controlled? Um, do you just show up and dump and then go park your trailer over the firehouse park or yeah. wherever it is? It's, 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 a reasonable, it's a reasonable concern. And uh, we are still working on what those details would be, but it is our intent and uh, that it will be uh, controlled by some degree of registration with who can use it, uh, and uh, it will be secured so only people that have permission at a given time will be able to access it. Is it going to be a cost to that, or uh, to be determined? Or? To be determined, I think the intent is not, but you know, this is still the details are still the, the discussions that we've had amongst ourselves so far, and, and you know, as John says, the, the, this is our intent would be residents only and owners of moorings in Cape Orpus because you have to pay a fee to have a mooring. So if you're going to pay, you should have a place to launch your boat. 
That, that's, that's a both and, not, not a, uh, so it's a, uh, the residents, I, I, it's not clear one will mandate a mooring, but uh, we certainly will be controlling it so we don't have a huge volume of people using it at any one given time. It, the, just the geographic location of it and in, in, in its setup in the tides cycle, um, it's more of a put in if you have a mooring or someplace to keep your boat. <laughs> Given the tides, it, it's difficult to put your boat in and then haul it out in the same day. Okay. So this is more, you know, long-term access for people. Will you will you be planning to schedule lunch time so you don't have a bunch of boat trailers coming up all at one time? Again, That's a good possibility, yeah. but something we would certainly be looking at. Yeah. yeah. Do you want to take a meeting? Yes. Um, at, at this time, I would like to ask uh, Louise and Harold Mooney if they would like to come and speak. You don't have to, but if there's anything, you, you're welcome to come up to the podium. Uh, but if we, I'm not, we're not putting you on the spot. You, you do not. <laughs> but, but you have to go to the, the, the microphone just so the folks at home can hear you. Buzz, if you don't want to, I'll speak for you. So I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't take him up on that. <laughs> we're we're more than willing to answer any questions that you might have. Um, frankly, we were quite pleased with this opportunity. We've uh, we've been part of Cape Corpus, as mentioned, for num you know decades with the family, and Louise and I have been living in. Kennebunk Port for, uh, excuse me, Kennebunk for uh, 22 years, of which we raised our, you know, children up here. So when this, whenever we take a walk over the pier and we look back at what we have, we just say to ourselves, we're so blessed to be a part of it. And we've always felt it important to give back to the community. Um, and as a goodwill gesture, we we left this left the uh, you know use of the ramp to the town and the town people um, just as a blessing that out of appreciation for what we have there. So Thank you. I don't know if you have any. Again, Thank the you, Moody's have, have offered that to the, to the community. Now, uh, as time's moving on, we have the opportunity to secure that uh, for our residents, for our fishing community uh, as a, an integral part of town. And I think that's a, a real blessing to be able to do that and uh, a gift that the Moonies have done in uh, keeping it public for these many, many decades. So thank you so much. John? Uh, it, are there any plans to perhaps have an attendant there in the during the summer uh, to do that? I there's nothing nothing in the works that at this point in time, no, but that I know of. But it's not impossible. Well, I guess would it be needed? I you know that's again we 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 will certainly take so we need input. We need to be looking at it. We need to if it. Yeah, those are things that would have to be looked at in the, in the future. I don't believe it would be needed. I believe we can manage it responsibly and, uh, and respect and honor the commercial needs of, uh, of the Langsford Seafood House. That's, that's one of the biggest, you know, so, the, yeah, so that's, we need to be sensitive to that and we'll make sure it works. April? So that's kind of my, what, what, I have two questions. My first one is, um, have you talked to the neighbors, and what do they think? That's my first question. We have not. Okay. And my second question is, Valoria, what's the balance right now in the capital reserve account? So the balance right now is about um, a little over $1.1 million. And so in this budget, we are looking to use 600000 And so with this... Um, Expenditure, we'd have about 250 thereabouts left. Okay. Uh, yeah. So, um, yeah, I am sorry, Ms. 
this meeting. <laughs> <laughs> so, John, is the committee, what's the cost to maintain? And are you guys going to be putting an outlet? I'll look together for that. Like, I don't know the shape of the launch now. It's and a good, It's a good question. There, there would not be a lot of maintenance costs. Uh, there, there may want to be some initial costs just to firm up the ground to, uh, uh, that's, that's a possibility, but it would not be a, a significant amount. And there's no long-term continuing maintenance, at least none anticipated. Mm -hmm. And I would, I would look to buzz, and it has not been a financial burden to maintain the, uh, the has it? Uh, no, it hasn't, and that, that's in part to John Green, who who uh, basically keeps it. We keep it. We have a so we don't uh, uh, have a lip with the, the hot top with the rose. Right. I remember that about John. John's, yeah. John's been grooming that off. Well, it's very gracious. Very gracious. Yeah, very yeah. Gracious with it. yeah. I, I think it's something that the highway. I That's think it's okay. something that the highway department yeah. could easily maintain in the same way. Um, since Buzz wasn't at the microphone and I didn't prompt him to go, basically what he said was John Green, the owner of um, Langsford Road Lobster, has uh, maintained the, the gravel at the edge. It's not paved. Very graciously. Yes, very graciously. And uh, so it, it, it's pretty easy. I mean, it's, it's gravel. It's very hard packed over there. You know, there's a lot of ledge underneath that, so it's it, it's not something that needs a great deal of maintenance. It's not as if it's a paved ramp that may have to be resurfaced every 10 to 15 years. And and then John, yeah. um, in terms of like any type of insurance, there's this would fall under the normal town insurance coverage. Would. We wouldn't no. have to. No, no. Perfect. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah, and and I would like to mention to to anybody who's unaware that. In my tenure on the board of about 10 years, we've had multiple surveys of, of, um, the, of, the, of the town, of the uh, taxpayers, and we've asked them, you know, what amenities in town do you want? What do you like about the town? What would you change, et cetera, et cetera? And the number one in all of them has been public access to the ocean. That has ranked either number one or number two in all the surveys that we've done. And, in the 10 years that I've been on this board. And, you know, frankly, I didn't think that that would ever come to fruition given the cost of real estate in, the, in town, especially waterfront real estate. So I think at $275,000, this, this is really a very good deal for the town. Uh, yes, Bob. I think part of the, I've responded to that before, and I actually called Lori early on when I had a boat looking for, for launching. I responded to that positively, wanting to do that too, but I was thinking, and John said we can't do that, is in and out the same day. Um, so some people might have been asking him for that way yeah. too. I mean, you could try, but it, it's a, that's a no, title I thing. That yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah, unless you build a dam at the mouth of the harbor, um, <laughs> you're not going to have the tide there sure. to, to do that. And, and the size of your boat will greatly determine um, at what point in the tide cycle you can put it in. You know, clearly a 13-foot whaler is going to go in a lot easier than my 38-foot lobster boat. You know, uh, that I'm going to have to have, if I were to haul it out there, I would need a, a very high rut of tide, and it would be no. out, and that would be it. Thank but, you. That was just a comment. Yeah, really absolutely. But, but it's a good question. It's questions that, um, you know, others have asked us, for sure. Well, I personally, I think it's a great idea and uh, well worth the investment of the town to. Well, the town will. This. Once we buy it, it, it will be ours, yeah. you know, in perpetuity. So you're looking for a motion from the budget board to authorize the purchase and sale? Uh, that, yes, yes, we are. Well, so, so rather than to authorize, you need a recommendation. Yeah. So because this is a financial consideration, yeah. the budget board needs a recommendation on the warrant. Yeah. Because this is this will go out to vote, David. Just just as the, the entire budget will. This yeah. will be, I believe, and I don't wish to speak out of turn, but I believe this will actually be on the ballot on Tuesday, okay. As opposed to at the town meeting. Yeah. That way, everybody's going to get to have their say on it. Yeah. Yes, Rick. Uh, John, uh, is your committee going to continue working on this to to work the proposal that we would put before the voters to know 
some of the details no. that we've been talking yes, about. Yes, there are two, two things. One, we will be creating a, a, a flat so we get that out. So a, a frequently asked question uh, piece uh, so that folks uh, will uh, have a place to go as different questions come up. We want to be sure they're answered. And we, we will be explaining the, uh, the intent uh, of how we would uh, have it controlled and what uh, any rules around it would be so the voters would, would know that. Yes. Uh, and then also the committee is going to stay active on uh, uh, looking for a kayak launch. We still have an intent of trying to find a place where we can uh, uh, have parking sufficient for a kayak launch. Thank you. Uh, before we take any votes, there are a couple of committee members in the audience. Um, uh, do any of Chip, do any of you wish to speak on this? No. Uh, John Green has his hands up. John, please come to the podium so folks I at home. First of all, I think it's a good idea if it's controlled. Yes. And that's the big question. And Buzz and Louise have been absolutely wonderful letting anybody come and use that ramp over the years. I worked with uh, Louise's father, Joe, for years when he was kind of down there, and I kind of took, took over running that ramp for him just out of due respect as a neighbor. So I've been there 30 years. At first, we didn't even need a chain to lock it up because just the fishermen would use it and a few people would use it and they'd respect it. And as things progressed in this town, it needed a chain and a lock. And Buzz and Louise still were unconditional to let anybody use it, anybody. Didn't matter if they were summer people, or they didn't have to be a resident. And we had a lot of good people down there that would come down and, and uh, we had rules just like you're talking. You know, no parking in the street because there is no parking in that street. I create enough of a problem around there in the summertime <laughs> with no parking and limited parking. And then uh, you just can't have trailers and trucks parking, Sheila knows. They plug the robot up when they come. You know, people are, some people are very good at it. They're, they come in, they got their act together, they know how to drive a trailer and that. They're in and out of there in 10 minutes. Other people. They park across my driveway so my customers can't get out. They're out there trying to step a mast with 10 people. They can't back a boat trailer up. It takes them six tries to get it into the ramp. You know, it's, it's, uh, it depends who's there. And then there's people that come in, and I always had a key to it and kept it locked, so they'd come in and I'd open it up for them. And I'd tell them, you know, no, you got to put your truck and trailer somewhere. Yep, yep, yep. And I'd be busy. I'd do something. I'd see the boat go out. I'd come out the front door. Where's the truck and the trailer? Parked it in the road. So you're going to end up with people that don't listen. And I don't know how you're going to enforce it. I really don't. Unless you have a gatekeeper, just like you do over in, at the pier. Because if you give out a combination lot to one person, it's going to yeah. in two weeks, 10 people are going to have it. Yeah. Guarantee. That's how it works. I've seen it for 30 years. I've seen keys be made. I give somebody a key which I wasn't supposed to do. And the next thing I know, they've got a key. So you have a, a, a serious, you know, some serious thought on how you're going to manage this without turning that end of Langford Road into more of a cluster than I already do. I try to do as best I can, but when you start getting, uh, we have two commercial guys down there that, that Buzz and Louise let in there, and last year, the 4th of July, fell on a Monday. So you know what the weekend was. Both of those commercial people came with other people's boats on a Saturday afternoon on 4th of July weekend at the same time. And I went out and even said to them, what are you doing? I mean, you know what's happening here, but they don't care. So you have good people, you have bad people, you have people who just don't know what, they just don't have a clue anyways. It is going to be imperative for you because I'm right next to it, to control that. The other question I had, so residents only, I don't know how you're going to get word out to everybody else because, I mean, even Buzz and Louise don't 
know the volume of people that come through there. In the springtime, on the, on, the, on the tides right in the middle of the day and everybody wants to put, there's a line of, line of people putting in there. A line. The other thing you said, uh, it's for the residents of Kenny Bunkport. Well, what about, and you said wharfs. Does that include all the wharfs in the Kenny Bunk River on the Kenny Bunkport side? No, I said moorings, John. You spoke about wharfs. Oh. Some people don't have moorings. They have wharfs. That's that's wharfs yeah. yeah. So, you know, are you going to open that up? Because they, they have access in the river at $7 a foot, but for a 30-foot boat, there's a $600 bill because it's $7 in and $7 out. If they can come down to Cape Porpoise and put that boat in, they're going to save themselves $600 if they're going to just take it back over to the port. I mean, there's plenty of port boats that go in that ramp. I know. I see it. You know, so it, is it going to be just the moorings in, for Kenny Bunk for Cape Porpoise, or are you going to include the river? When you include the river, they have access over there. They just have to pay for it. You get it, give it out for free. You can put a 35-foot boat in that ramp. Seven dollars a foot in, seven dollars a foot out. That's what's going to cost you, Kenny Bunk Port Marina. Yeah. Yeah. You know, why wouldn't they go to Cape Porpoise and save the money? Right? You could sell them some gas. I mean, <laughs> it's, if it's a public ramp now, Kenny Bunk Port public ramp, well, great. Right? Absolutely. So you you need to think about that because there's a lot of boats in that river. A lot of boats in Cape Porpoise Harbor. Is it going to include Goose Rocks Beach moorings? Yes. Is it going to include Turbots Creek moorings? Yes. Um, I don't know how you're going to control it, honestly. I've tried for 30 years, and I fail. I mean, I, I, I do the best I can, but I don't, I don't always keep up with it. There's people, uh, that ramp doesn't need much work. I, I, grade some, I grade it out when I grade my parking lot out, and there's no... There's no, you know, it takes a little bit of gravel here and there, like because it got washed out in that December storm, but it's not, it's, it's good ground. You have some people that try to put boats in with a two-wheel drive that can't possibly pull them out, and, and you know what happens to the gravel. They tear it all up. We go put it back together. They don't. So, I mean, I'm for this if you can control it. If you can't control it, it's going to be mayhem down there. Think of this. So not some guy that doesn't have permission there, but he's been launching there for 15 years, now comes down with his 25-foot boat and a trailer, and guess what? It's locked up, and he can't get in. Well, it's been locked up for a couple of years. On and off, yeah. Right. But they are, but locked up or not, they just come in and see me. I say, sign the form, and you're good. Sign the release. I unlock it for him. So this time they come in, they're from who knows where they're from. They're going to do what they've been doing the last few years. They go down Langston Road with a pickup truck and a 25-foot boat. Well, sorry, you don't have a mooring. You, you, don't, you don't belong here. You're not going to get in. How are they going to get out of there? They're going to back it in and then go out. Where are they going to back into? Well, you'll have it. Go into the combo. We'll open it. <laughs> The, you can't turn around at the end of Langsford Road. You can barely turn a garbage truck around down there. <laughs> we used to back into Greer Lane, but the people that own that decided they didn't want us there anymore, so they put boulders all around it so we can't back in there. So now you've got a, a, a long truck trailer. How is he going to turn around? Or is he going to back all the way up the Ward Road and then turn around? No, sure. That's going to be, that can be interesting because some people can't back a trailer up. Some people are great at it. But what's that, what, on a Saturday afternoon, what's that going to do when they can't get out of there? They, there's no place for them to turn around? Where are you going to put that? <laughs> you want to buy more land? <laughs> right next door. No. Um, <laughs> I hear you got, you got a green railway you're interested in. <laughs> nice railway. Yeah. That railway is an asset to the town and the fishermen. You bet. Yeah. Don't think we don't know that. Yeah, right. Well, think about that, too. Yeah. I mean, you know, I'm not, I'm not getting younger every year. <laughs> I've been there 30 years. So um, great piece of property. Uh, good thought on everybody. You've got a lot of work to control it. Just because I know. I can't control it. And I can get pretty, pretty gruff if I want to. And it's, uh, they still get around me, you know.
um, good asset for the town. Yeah, and it's good for the, the Moonies that what you offered them for. I got to tell you, about seven, eight years ago, I said, you ought to sell that to me. And I offered them 20000 <laughs> <laughs> So feel you're lucky you still have it. <laughs> they said, no, you know. But they thought about it. Mm -hmm. You could be dealing with me now. <laughs> you're you're going to deal with me anyways, because I'm the neighbor. Yeah. But, um, That's good. but having you there is going to be an important piece. <laughs> Another thing, if you run this by the town council, can you buy a piece of property like that that's for the public and then limit it to exclude everybody except a small portion of the population? Well, we're not excluding, you know, any Kenny Bunkport landowner, taxpayer, et cetera, can use it, and they're the ones who are paying for it. It's kind of like the beach, John. You know, if you want to go down to Goose Rocks Beach, all the residents get a sticker for $5. And we could easily have said it was free to residents. Um, don't get any ideas. Uh, <laughs> but we could have said that and then charged uh, people from out of town. I mean, it, it is our town in the sense, and, and it's your town too. You own property right. here. Right. It, you, know, you may not be a resident, right. but you're still part of the town. Right. Um, so yes, we can. And, and we have had... You can limit... We've had more discussion with lawyers in yeah. the t 10 years I've been on this board than I ever want to have with lawyers in the, in the rest of my life. I hear so you. yes, right. we have thoroughly vetted this, but you know, I appreciate you bringing that up. Yeah, I mean, because you're, you're, you're going to service a, select amount, a small select amount of people for the amount of people in the town. Yes. As, as moorings and dock holders in, yes. in, in those three districts, if you exclude Kenny Bunk River, you need to think about that. But if it's legal for you to do that, I mean, it, what is it, one or two percent of the people that are, that are going to be able to use that because the rest no. of them? No. But the how population? many of the people, John, who put their boats in, are you talking about people who are putting their boats in and keeping them at the marinas? In right. The, well, anybody can do it if you're going to open up the river. If they're a Kenny Bunkport resident and they have dockage, right? Yeah, but how many of those folks down there, and I don't know the answer, and, and I don't know that you do either, how many of those people are, are residents? Because I know a lot of people who have boats in the Kenny Bunk River right. who are Kenny Bunk residents. Exactly. And so, you know, by that definition, they wouldn't be eligible. You know, I've seen everything from DeMillo's yeah. coming down from Portland launching boats there. Yeah. Not anymore. <laughs> well, not yet, but yeah. I mean, I've seen a lot, yeah. a lot more than what Buzz and Louise ever suspected. When they first <laughs> locked it up, they said, well, just have them call us. I said, you're going you're gonna to regret that because they aren't there all the time. So your biggest and my biggest fear is you not managing that right. You'll hurt my business if you don't. I mean, it's, I'm up for it. I'm all for it. I'm glad the Moonies are getting something out of it. But believe me, you're going to have your hands full managing that ramp. I don't know if I want to take it over for you because then I'm the bad guy. You know, and the bad guy isn't good for business. No. Right? So I did it for them because we were neighbors and we have a good agreement. That's Thank what you. I did. Thank you, John. I, I think John makes... Three very good points. One is the uh, need for perhaps a gatekeeper. Uh, don't know what the cost would be. That would be. A second one would be perhaps a need to schedule boat launches. I mean, the marinas do that now to keep people from backing up. They schedule right. them. And the third thing would be uh, perhaps a limit on the overall length of truck plus trailer. I mean, just, uh, how, it's going to limit it itself. Them... It's got, as John said, um, you know, 35 foot boat is about as big as you're going to get in, in and out of there. Yeah. Uh, because you do have to back your in at an angle and then back down. Right. It's not a straight but if, if down. You, if you did a registration process, yeah. you would know how long. And that's really what I believe we're going to yeah. need to do. These, to use that ramp, I, you're going to need to be registered with the town. We'll know the trailer, we'll know the license plate of the trailer, we'll know the length of the yeah. boat. And with scheduling, I think, is going to be important by time. Uh, the combo is going to be changed weekly, if not more frequently. Uh, new locks now, that's a piece of cake. So, I, you know, this isn't be something that's going to go around that everybody's going to be able to willy-nilly use. 
I, I really believe we've got the mechanics to do it, and uh, John will let us know clearly and rightly so uh, <laughs> if we're if we're not doing it properly, and we'll find ways to fix it. The only exception to the, um, the like the the trailer and the thing. So for the commercial boats, they don't haul their you know the lobster boats. They don't haul their own boat. You know, usually Paul over at Southern Maine Marine right. or one of these other guys does it and and they're good because they know how to back up and right. <laughs> there is no they're they're in and out they haul my dad's boat there and they are in and out in, the, in no time and that would obviously be one of the options on the form would yes. be to have a commercially hauled would yep. be preferable yes yeah absolutely <laughs> yep all right we got to get moving on because the budget board will be here all night if we don't uh, yeah. wrap this up <laughs> right david right i'm going home to have dinner you're gonna have to sit here and would Deliberate. I object if I make a motion? Yeah. I, I believe so. All right. I guess the motion would be that the budget board recommends that the Board of Selectmen go ahead and authorize a purchase and sale agreement contingent upon the town meeting approvals. I second the motion. Any more discussion? I did. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Wonderful. I'm also in favor. Oh. Oh. Yeah. Michelle. That was Michelle. Michelle. Oh. Yeah. Thank you, Michelle. Oh, yeah. Well, that was unanimous. unanimous. Was that unanimous? Thank you, April. All right. So, do I have a motion for the Board of Selectmen to enter into this agreement? I would move that the Board of Selectmen enter into agreement to purchase the Mooney's property for 275 thousand dollars contingent on town approval uh, voter approval second second okay i have a first and a second uh all those in favor alan aye all right the motion is unanimous thank you uh so do i have a motion to adjourn, adjourn. the board of selectmen second <laughs> all those in favor aye. alan aye all right aye. all right we are adjourned Good night. thank you for your time to the budget board in April, and thank you for everyone else. Bye, Alan. Yeah. Bye bye. Thank you. Oh, that would be a good idea. Yeah, yeah why don't you, you are grab it? Drag it across. I think I might grab a couple of things. Yeah. No, I'd like to hear. It's your meeting at this point in April. I know. As soon as we get rid of everybody, we'll get going. Blocking the boat land? What? No, we can hear the alarms going on. Way out there? Way out there? Do you have a Jeep? Do you have a Jeep? There's been a lot of people here. It's not going to be that long. Well, now it's going to be long. Now you've got that. <laughs> Okay, so we're going to call the meeting back in order here, everybody. Thank you. <laughs> there is a Jeep out there with its horn honking if there's someone who has an alarm going. I got it. What? I think Jeep. Da Dave I walked Jeep here. Yeah, there's a line going off. Of the Did you drive your car here, Dave? Alarm going off. That's us too, though. So. Oh, it just stopped. No, you're good. It just stopped. You're good. Huh? You're not it. <laughs> I'm not it. <in>. Okay. <laughs> good to know, right? Yeah. <laughs>
your turn. Yeah, there was an actual speech. Yeah. It's all right. We're all settled. We're, we're used to not seeing each other. <laughs> okay, are we ready to continue? Ms. Laura, are you ready? Yep. All right, before we get going on to the budget, I just want to approve the minutes of the last meeting, and we'll get that out of the way. Do I hear a motion? So moved. moved. Okay, David moved it. David James? Second. 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 Aye. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, unanimous. <coughs> and any opposed? Okay, it's unanimous. All right, Lori, you're up. So a week ago, I emailed out to the budget board the adjusted tax commitment, the uh, budget votes, and the budget reductions that the Board of Selectmen made. And so everyone should have received those. And tonight, uh, we also handed out hard copies for you. So I'm just going to walk you through those changes. Um, so we had a reduction in the recreation operational budget of 20000 due to a change in employee participation in, in our health insurance program. On the um, capital side, we reduce the streetlight program under special projects capital by 30,000. So it went from 80,000 to 50,000 and we're extending the um, switchover from a three year program to a five year program. So there were 50,000 in expenditures amendments. And then on the revenue side, the Board of Selectmen agreed to increase the building permit fee from $10 a thousand to $12 a thousand. Uh, that generated another 90,000 in revenue. Parking violations were increased by $7, so Goose Rock Beach violations would be 60 and others throughout town would be 40. That generated another 12,000 in revenue. There was an increase in resident and daily stickers by $5. That would be for summer of 2024, not summer of 2023. Although the selectmen said that we should increase the daily stickers this summer, summer of 2023. So that would be those purchased in the kiosks at the beach. That generated another 50000 And then there was an addition of the pick of it transfer for the gutter replacement at the police and public health building. So that was 15000 and then an increase in the Dock Square parking lot transfer for funding the Pearl and Elm Street paving. So those revenue increases were 197000 for a total change of 247000 And so if you looked at your adjusted budget commitment sheet, it brought the tax uh, rate down from 629 to 622. So those were all the amendments made. The, the board did um, revisit the idea of uh, doing a lease purchase on the bins for um, automated pickup for waste and recycling. Uh, we received a couple of, you know, quotes for a lease purchase to understand what that interest rate implication could be. Keep in mind that, you know, when that decision was made, we'd have to go back out. So we were just looking at proposals. The lower end of those proposals was for a three-year lease, um, an interest uh, accumulation over the three-year period of about twenty dollars to $25,000. So the board... Um, went back and forth and gave it a lot of consideration. Um, it ended up being a 3-2 vote, but the majority of the board said they did not want to expend that money on interest when it could be better used um, towards other capital needs. So that was kept in the budget in totality. Okay. Can I just ask a question? So what would, that, what would have that looked like? I guess my question is, so would it be the roughly... 400,000 divided by 3 plus 25. So, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I think it brought the reduction um, down by 240,000. Am I? Yeah. I'm looking at Nicole to make sure I'm saying the right numbers now because I didn't print it off. I'm going by memory. But I think it was 240,000. 
And I think it brought the increase from 22 cents down to 15 cents. So it was another seven cent reduction. And that 25,000 roughly be paid over the three year period? Yep, yep. So, so you add that back into what the payment is? Okay. So can, can you just share, I know it's a th close vote, three, two, you said. So can you share a little bit about the dialogue? Because I was actually, I kind of liked the leaf. We were kind of talking about it before. Well, I'd say Mike and John are here, and why don't I let them speak for themselves and the rest of the board? Well, my objection was to leasing these things. These are uh, uh, waste barrels. Uh, we are an affluent community. Uh, we didn't want to get involved in leasing and spending up to $25,000 in interest. We really don't need to. And to, to my way of thinking, uh, you're going to pay the money in taxes anyway. You're just going to do it over three years. Mm -hmm. So you're going to be paying it each year because you're going to be paying the, the full amount. So plus. So I looked at it and I said, you know, this is, uh, like I say, an affluent com community. Most, I mean, it's not like uh, uh, we want to be in a leasing business. We, we, we've got uh, obligations with bonds and everything else like that. And let's just pay it, get it done with, and work the whole thing out. That's, that's where I was. John had a different opinion, so it's good that we're both here. Yeah. yeah. I'm going to steal your mic. And the, yeah, and uh, two others agreed with me, so. Yeah, I was on so the they, loser. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was, I was on the I loser, was, right? I, I was on the losing end. I was on the losing end, I'll, I'll admit it. I, you know, I, you know, I'd write on. I, I was on the unvoted end, uh, but it. Uh, you know, I, I started just looking at the twenty thousand, and uh, that's that's money. Uh, but uh, three thousand thirty five hundred households. Uh, I guess I, I figured that's uh, you know six bucks per household spread over three years. So uh, it's not a whole lot of money, uh, but that's still it's money. And so why why spend that money? Uh, and the. Uh, my thinking on that was if you save that seven cents, if you put the seven cents in now, then it's, it's sort of baked in. It's uh, uh, next year, we won't have that $300,000. Well, the tax going to go down? We're probably not. It just, it just, le it just raises the, the baseline where you would now have to keep that seven or a portion of it uh, for three years. Uh, it, just, it just holds down the baseline. So to me, I know it was important to the budget board, so I was trying to play a nice guy, uh, and uh, I could, and I was very rare for me, and I could, um, uh, I I could see justifying it, so that's why I uh, I voted for it. But you, but you know, I think Mike's point. We're going to pay the same amount whether we pay it. When you pay three, more, three. actually, would that? And if you do it with the interest, you're going to pay more. No question. So why do we want to do that? I, you know, great. As long as long as you're comfortable with that extra seven cents, yeah. so am I. I mean, <laughs> that's that. That's perfect. And and the <laughs> reductions that have already been made have gotten the tax mill rate down to almost yeah. flat from what it was last year. I mean, yeah. what it, it's not flat. it got it down seven cents. Not Close. seven cents. Yeah, from the six point. We went from 22 now down to right yeah, to, yeah. The, to the 15. So, so uh, I'm very yeah. happy with what you've done. Well, go ahead, Bob. So I have two questions. First, what's what's the interest rate? Was it figure out to be for the? Oh gosh, well, I think it was close to five. Yeah, yeah. So, <coughs> high fours. So that's a pretty good rate, especially where the rates are going. So that aside. Um, Ah, uh, <laughs> some nepot. I don't know. <laughs> so, personally, I just think that's a great rate. Um, You're right. That is a great rate. 
<laughs> so um, that's where my mortgage is too. So, <laughs> um, but the other thing is, Mike, I, I just it kind of bothers me the fact that this town brags the fact that we're a fluent town. We have a lot of people in this town that have trouble making payments. So nothing against you personally. I just think that's we're not all all affluent. So, Mike. Mike, in this in the scale on the scale of things, this is a small. It's not small to some people, I understand, but it's not an issue that uh, I think is is going to make a big difference because you're going to be paying, as I said, you're going to be paying the same amount. You're just going to delay paying it for one year and another year and another year. And at the end of three years, you're paying the same amount plus $25,000. It's like buying a car, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah. So why do we want to do that? I don't know. I usually finance my cars, but that's okay. <laughs> and, I, and, I, and I never do. So, so, I'm not affluent, so yeah. that's right. Yeah, I'm not either. I wish I was. <laughs> so anyway, uh, that, that was the reason behind it. Okay. Yeah. Quick question. Um, and maybe this figures into the conversation. With the recent discovery of the screw-up in the state around yeah. the education assessment, are we expecting to see the line item for us go down? No. Can I no? It doesn't go down. Don't, don't <laughs> think we should. What do you think we should? You're going to keep all of that. You know that. So the RSU uh, 21 Finance Subcommittee met this morning at 8.30, and... Uh, reviewed the new 279 form. So basically, Kenny, I shouldn't say Kenny Bunkport, RSU 21 is receiving about 1.1 million, a little over that, um, dollars in state funding. That's more. More. More than they thought they were going to get. That's so it's still a decrease. Yeah. It's still a decrease of about 600,000. How much was that again? It was about 1.1. I could tell you the exact number. I printed it off in one of these. It was 1.17, oh, right here. It was 1.118224. So Kenny Bunkport is what they call a non-receiver town because of our valuation. And in the state's calculations, they believe you should have so much of a tax rate committed to education funding. And each year they set that rate, regardless of what town you're in. And when you have a $6 tax rate and the requirement is above $6, <laughs> you're clearly not meeting that. So uh, Kenny Bunk put us a non-receiver town, uh, but Kenny Bunk and Arundel are receiver towns. So that $1.1 million that we got um, goes directly into the very complicated funding formula to decrease their commitment. Just wanted to make sure. Then the school this morning decided to add about a half a million dollars, the finance committee. So they went through that rendition. And so they added 200000 um, for special ed. There was an out-of-state um, placement they needed to make, 8000 for cheering mats, 85000 for a new teacher. Good news is it's for KCS. 200000 for the Capital Reserve Fund, 25000 for Sea Road School Security Improvements. And then they made a deduction of 33000 for um, health insurance. So all said and done, it's about 500000 That 500000 doesn't get deducted from the $1.1 million. It goes right into the expenditure formula, and so we all share it. We don't all share the revenue, but we all share the expense. <laughs> So they um, are bring. So we are not a winner in that equation. We never are. And I, 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 and so I never. so we um, they are they the school board in itself has not you know seen it or acted on it. They're supposed to have a meeting next week and hear a comment from the public on the budget process, but they won't finalize the budget until the end of April, April twenty fourth. And then I noticed that uh, obviously the county assessment went up another hundred or so thousand. So that means Kenny Bunkport represents about 1.5% of the county's population, but about 6% of the county budget. And we're clear outliers along with Agonquit. Um, so yep. Agonquit yeah. is our friend. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
Okay. So, I, I, I just want to make a statement. Um, the, I think the budget board has done a really good job of trying to, to advocate for everybody in the town, all the taxpayers in the town, whether you can afford to pay your taxes or not. I mean, we want to get the rate down, as, and we've gotten it down from the beginning, the first commitment we saw, till now, 15 cents without cutting anything from the budget. So I think that that, you know, is great. My whole goal this year is to get the tax rate as low as possible because in November we may be voting, hopefully we're voting, on a new town hall. And if people see their tax bill in September and see, or August, and see that their taxes went up a lot, and I don't think, I mean, truly I don't think $220 on a million dollar house is really a lot, but some people would think that. Um, then are they going to vote for the town hall? And my whole goal is to get that town hall passed. I mean, we needed it 25 years ago, we should have passed it, and it didn't happen. And I worked in that awful building for 17 years, and I know exactly how much we need a new town hall. And I'm, along with Mike and Lori and the department directors, um, and John, we're all on the committee, and we're working very hard to get the best product out there for the best, you know, amount of money that we can afford to spend. Um, and I just really want that passed. And more than anything, um, I, we need a new town hall. We need a community center, a place that this community can call a center. We can have meetings. We can have events. It's, you know, representative of this town, not a dumpy building, you know, over on Elm Street. So hey, that's... That, that's my home. <laughs> I know. It was my home longer than it was your home. So <laughs> um, my grandfather went to school there. So um, I just, that's my goal. That's why I don't want anybody to think that I'm cheap because... This budget was great. We have plans, you know, we have a capital plan and I really want to stick to it because if we postpone something this year, because I was looking at everything in the capital because that's the only place I would cut. The operating budget is not, has, does not have a lot of fat in it, for sure. The department chair, the department directors always, always, always put in so much effort into keeping the operating budget down. I know that from doing it for so many years. And I just was looking and looking at capital and I couldn't figure out any place that I would want to cut it other than those stupid bins. <laughs> but <laughs> I won't, don't get me started on that. I, um, for the bins, after listening to your discussions, because I watched the meeting, I truly feel that it's okay that we're gonna pay for them all at once because next year when we have the tax rate where we will be having hopefully a new town hall in that, in, involved in that, we won't have that $384,000 in the budget. We, it'll be come out and hopefully we won't replace it with anything. So that alone will bring the tax rate down 12 cents. So, I'm looking for the future instead of this year. I mean, I, I would have liked to have seen it this year as well, because if we could say, hey, the tax rate's only going up, you know, six cents or 10 cents, then maybe in November the outcome will be better. But so that's my whole goal in this. I also want to thank you guys, you selectmen, the selectmen, and Sheeler, <laughs> not all guys. Um, I just want to thank you for listening to us as far as the revenues go. Um, you did a great job of raising the revenues, increasing our revenues. 
by raising the fees. And hopefully, you can put it on your agenda for maybe October or November for next year. So they'll be in place before January 1st comes, because that's when the fees start. A lot of the fees are annual, like from January to December. Um, and look at the fees in the fall for next year, because there are some things that you we couldn't you couldn't do anything about this year because they're already in effect, like the Dock Square parking lot. I mean, you could look at liquor licenses and Bittler's licenses, and I always thought that everybody pays the same for a liquor license, and I think it's kind of, I always thought it was strange that a little B&B &B who serves wine in the afternoon to their guests, their four guests that they have, pays the same amount for a liquor license as the colony does. And you could do that in a tiered fashion where it wouldn't hurt the little guys so much, but the bigger establishments who make a lot more money might pay a little bit more for a liquor license. Same with Vittler's. In the Vittler's licenses, if you did it by number of seats in the restaurant, would be the same thing if you did it like that. Because that's how sewer charges per seat in a restaurant, how much their sewer bill is. and so why not charge, because the, you know, you look at the, uh, the Nonantum, who has 300 person weddings Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, and then you look at, I don't know, Musette, or even one of the B&Bs that are paying, they have four tables in their little restaurant, because they only have four rooms that they rent out. They shouldn't be paying the same Vittler's fee that the Nonantum does. So you could look at that, too. I mean, there's other ways of, of looking at these fees. And Dan Beard, who isn't here tonight, but called me up this week and said, will you please say at the meeting for me, he said, I, he watched you guys with the fees as well. And he said, I went and looked online at how much people are charging for short-term rentals in this town. And he thought that the fees were not enough, considering how much people are charging per week for a short-term rental. So that's his thing. He would like you to look at the short-term rental fees. So. So Dan Beard went online? He did. <laughs> he must have had Sarah helping him. Oh. <laughs> uh, April? April? Yeah. Yeah. Um, you said, I, I think I heard you say that the parking fees, Dock Square, uh, were not going to be raised this summer? Because they've already... I understood that they have, were. Haven't they already programmed the machines or something is that we couldn't... So the issue is that we've already ha started handing out chaser tickets to residents. We already sent those letters and people have been collecting them. And those are not based on an hour. They have a, a dollar value to them. And so people's chaser tickets wouldn't work in the system. We'd already had done about 100 uh, residents when, when that came before us. So I talked to the board about delaying it until 2024, just so everybody could be on the same page. And I think they felt that was a reasonable um, solution. Well, I, I know who the vendor is for that, for those machines in the dock square parking. And if I'm less I'm mistaken, I believe they can program differently. They, they can program the machines. The problem is the chaser tickets that we hand out, those are already pre-programmed. And we've already been handing them out to people for this summer. Okay. It's okay because the, at least then we'll have some increased revenues for next year. Right. I'm looking at it. Yeah. And it'll, help, it'll just help bring the tax rate down or the mill rate down next year when we add additional revenues because they've added a good portion of you know some new revenues this year and if we add a few more next year it won't be all at once and i think it so, might so the chaser tickets themselves aren't they programmed differently than the tags that people get in the machine and then put in the to process payments they are but when residents go there and put in a a, a chaser ticket, right. it has a dollar value, and the dollar value would not be the same dollar value we're charging. 
we'd be charging $5 and the dollar value on the chaser ticket would be $4. Okay. Or maybe $6. Or whatever <laughs> magical number okay. that the board decide. Yeah, I, okay. So anyway, thank you. Thank you. I really appreciate that you did that this year. You looked at the fees and listened to us. And, and April, you did a great job for yeah. summarizing. <laughs> thank you, April. <laughs> That's too good. So anyway. Go ahead. Can we get on with uh, moving? I know. Are we ready to vote? The budget? Well, can I just make a couple comments? Sure. So I, um, you know, so listening to, so once, you know, thank you, like April said. So I think, you know, it was really nice to see the revenue uh, feedback from you guys and then also all the work on the lease option, you know, whether or not it got voted for. Um, personally, I think the one thing I'd like to just keep bringing forefront is after we listened to all the um, directors talk and I think the strategy of the town, you know, the, um, the growth that you have outlaid and, um, you know, how we're putting capital re reserve away, you know, and all that is great. So I, I get all that. I think it's wonderful. I think the only thing that I'm, that sort of is I don't see a path to the sea on is on some of the director heads. Like we're going to have some changes coming forward. The per diem thing um, for the fire, um, again, both the police chief and the fire chief, um, you know, two in, two out, you know, not having enough headcount at the calls, you know, heard loud and clear clear from both chiefs that as it is right now, you know, the community is great, it's safe, but as we move forward, there's going to be uh, very much like, you know, capital hurdles, there's going to be these hurdles that are driven by shifting on how we're managing resources. And what I don't see, um, because I think what we like to keep uh, as we look at the economic future, you know, we are going to have these pressures, and even though we have said here in this room, you know, this is going to be, you know, a, a, a small increase, but every, every um, taxpayer sitting home and everything they touch is having that small increase. So as you said, April, it behooves us to, you know, keep the mill rate down as flat as we can, and this is a great job. Um, but I think uh, what I'm wondering about is when we get to 2025, you know, what other levers are we going to think about um, when we go to do a per diem eventually, when we have to bring on more resources that are going to be a higher expense again? Um, what is the town, you know, what are we going to do differently within our budget to enable that? You know, are we going to have to start giving up some things in some areas? And I know people don't want to change the look and feel of the town, and I get that 100 percent, but every person that is in, the, in their life right now, their own personal experiences, they need to give something up. So the average American, probably the average town person, is giving up something, making some kind of trade-off um, with the current state. So I think that's, uh, you know, I agree with what everybody said about the work that went into this. Um, the work that the selectmen did to come back um, with some trade-offs for us. Um, but then the question is, as we go forward, uh, not just putting capital uh, in reserve, but where's the strategy, you know, what type of strategic thoughts do we have? What type of changes do we have to put into the town to enable the growth for the safety and security, which are paramount? You know, they're, they're not the soft stuff. They're the real stuff the town has to provide. So that's, you know, um, and I don't know in 25, you know, when we go to do 25, um, do we have some of those discussions before? Do we change how our work process is? Maybe had some of those discussions before you go and meet uh, and, you know, break out with all the, um, you know, department heads, you know, or does the board of select them? select um, men, you know, put something in place with the town. Um, so I, I think that's that's the only issue that I see, not with this budget, but we do need to think forward to. I think you're 100% right, and mm -hmm. it's going to force the town and the residents of the town to think very, very creatively about how the town generates additional revenues and certain 
decisions i think the town will have to make in let's say the next twenty four to thirty six months will push some people but to address the needs of a town with the entry point that king funk sport has and expectations of having to and to out being able to address public safety, public works, infrastructure expansion, amenities. I'm not sure. Yeah. I think I think the town's gonna have to get very creative and uh, residents are gonna have to be okay with that. And they're gonna have to trust the folks that they've elected and they have in place. Mm. But you're hundred percent right. The operating model is gonna change. Yeah, but I think I think what I'm what I'm getting to is that we have a very compressed cycle for budget review. And you know, I don't want to have, I don't want to be um, having that part of the conversation when all this upfront work has been done on the 25 budget. I think there's there's got to be some way, some process, some ways of getting. Yeah, and and let me just you know speak to that a little bit. I mean, those issues that you're talking about are issues that department directors and I talk about on a regular basis and have been for years as we see the future and try to predict what we're going to need. Um, I think we've been very fortunate with per diem firefighters to prolong it as, as long as it has been. But, you know, the public safety study that we've asked to be funded in the capital plant this year is about working not only with the fire department but also CHEMS, our emergency medical, to work out how we're going to deal with this. And, and one of the challenges that I face in managing Kenny Bunkport is its unwillingness to be a regional partner. And so um, certainly there are only so many firefighters and paramedics and police officers out in the world today. Try to hire one. Try to hire a good one. Let me say that. There's lots of bad ones. <laughs> and so, um, you know, to me, you know, this baby boom retirement, you know, if you look at the life cycle in the United States, I mean, we are not making more people to care for the people who are in the other category. And, and I'm on the edge of that. But... Um, and so to me, there's only so many people to go around, and we got to start looking at the models of service delivery differently. And not every town can have its own, in my opinion. My job is to manage Kenny Bunkport, how Kenny Bunkport voters and, and the boards want it to be managed, and so I do that. But I often speak about we got to look at a different way to do this. I think dispatch services, the way we've done them, you know, is something that's probably going to change in the future. I think, um, you know, the firefighters, I can see that coming, but us just creating another unique individual home rule uh, model of firefighting service or law enforcement service, is that's not going to work in the future. And so we are happy to bring those along, and we have those discussions with the selectmen, and, and I usually try to invite the budget board if I think it's something that's going to interest them. I'm happy to and to send that invite out again, so when we go through those presentations, you can tune in or be a part of that. But I guess I need to hear that the town is open and interested to other service delivery models. I, I think I think it's um, it's like Dimitri said. I think it's part of um, an, an education process to say what would happen if it if if the model doesn't change, right? So in industry, there's out you know offshoring. There's remote services. You know there's artificial intelligence, there's a lot of stuff happening to take that heavy weight of some back office stuff off the plate. And as you said, there's some, you know, district type sharing stuff. And I think that has to, that has to come because as April said, and we discussed at the end of the last meeting, um, the town of Kennedy Bunkport only has so many areas for revenue, right? And, you know, April brought up a few more tonight but I think, you know, there's only so much we're going to be able to squeeze on that side, too. Yeah. Thank you. I just want to thank you, Lori, and your team, um, Nicole and everybody else, as well as the Board of Selectmen and, and most importantly, the department heads. I think this is my first year to do this. Um, not that I haven't done a budget committee in other towns, but this is... I'm enlightening, um, so I really appreciate what you did. And, and like April said, I think the fact that the Board of Selectmen went and looked for revenues, they, they listened to what we were looking for, and you went and did it. I think that's, that's huge. I'm really impressed with everything as 
I know I'm sort of a rebel rouser sometimes asking for things. What a, it's the new guy. And as Kai would invest the fact of my rotary days, I'm a rebel rouser there too. Um, so <laughs> she's the sergeant of arms, so she kicked me down. Um, but with all that said, um, I don't know how, I'm, I'm still kind of convinced that we should lease the, the barrels, but I don't know how to deal with that and put it to a vote for the budget committee. So, I mean, I can't be the only one. I've been the only one before. I have a wife and two daughters, so I've been the only oh, one. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, the budget board certainly makes their own recommendations. And so if, you know, it's about the motions you make and, and the vote you take. But as we go down through the numbers, I mean, if you wanted to change that, then it would be under capital, under um, special projects. So right now that number is 535,000 and, and what would the number be finance director if we leased on three years? She'll tell you by the time we get there. But uh, you know, it's up to the budget board what their recommendations are. If you vote differently, we'll be back next week. Mm. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh. No pressure. Yeah, I'm doing really. next week. I'm trying to decide whether I think that, because we we did get it down another seven cents, so I'm trying to decide whether I think that if it came down a little bit more, whether it would be make a huge difference in our tax bill, which it wouldn't, or would it make a big difference in November when we vote on the town hall? That's my goal. But you know that's my goal. But the town hall will be bonded, most likely, right? Correct. It will, but it's so, still going to add something to the tax, no, I, to the mill rate I, every year. I totally agree, but I mean, it's a, it's, it's apples and oranges to an extent as far as financing goes. But I understand what you're saying, April. Right, so. and so if somebody's tax bill went up two hundred dollars this yeah. year, and then it goes up another two hundred dollars next year, you know, are they going to be happy with that? Or if it went up fifty dollars this year and Two hundred dollars next year is that better? Yeah, you know. I I, get I, yeah. yeah, so I get that. You know. The other thing, the other thing that we, I, at least I consider when I'm talking about, this, we went from nine dollars and sixty cents to six dollars. So right, but our I, but our valuations went up. Yeah, but over half the people, about half the people, either got a decrease or stayed the yeah. same. Yeah. So it's not like. Uh, the, the people who needed it, I think, who got got probably a reduction. I'm guessing they, they got a reduction. I haven't looked at the demographics, but, right. but uh, I looked at the numbers. So, uh, And this year, hopefully, everybody who is over 65 and have lived in the town for, or in the town for more than 10 years applied for the tax stabilization. Yeah. So their tax rate isn't going to go up anyway. Yeah, exactly. But well, we hope that goes into that's effect. Assuming the state that's assuming that. I know. Not. Yeah, <laughs> but, but you're exactly right. So yeah. I, I, I just again. I mean, April. I, you know, I, I think I'm less. You know, I, I the the leasing program does appeal to me. Um, you know, I, I I'm listening to your points. I understand it, but I do think that. Um, I'm looking not at November, but um, I agree with your comments about November, but I'm looking more at today's pocketbook um, for the average citizen here in Penny Bond. Mm -hmm. And to me, the option on the lease, uh, the 4.9 or 6.5%, you know, the 20 to 25,000 over the three years, uh, to me that feels in this environment a good deal. To put forward. But how much would it bring the tax rate down if we leased it over three years? So it would decrease it by two hundred and forty thousand. Yeah. So that would be about six cents. Yeah. But then you're going to be paying that for the next year. Right. But it decreases right. it this year. So it's going to come down Correct. six but six cents this year, but then we're going to be paying it for the next two years. Correct. Right. Where if we pay it the extra six cents this year, then we're done with it. All right. All right. 
So as much as I want to get rid of those trash bins, <laughs> I think we just should do it. Madam Chairman, I, we have beat this one to death. I know, I know. Shouldn't we get on and I agree. Let's let's take let's our recommendations vote. on the budget, and those who want to vote against the garbage cans can. <laughs> Is that how we do it, though? We just vote the entire budget? And then yeah. No, 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 no. We're going to no. vote we, by second. We do it by category. Each section. Okay. Yep. So do you have your sheet here? Yep. 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 That's how we're going to go. That's how we go. And this, what the select board did was, rather than doing each item within a category, look at the total category. The total. I just know. Unless you have a particular problem. I just want to know when we're talking trash. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you're forgiven. <laughs> so should we start? Yes. Do you want me to start? Yes. So, all right. So the first vote that we're going to take is on general government program expenses. And the total for that is $2,313,526. I would make a motion that the budget board recommend the $2,313,526. Second. I second the motion. Well, Mary Beth second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Make sure you get a vote for Michelle online. Okay. So is everybody here in favor? Yes? Yes. Yep. And Michelle? I'm in favor. So we have 11 to 0. Correct? Yes. Aye. Okay. Next one, public safety program expenses. The total is $3,389,796. Do I hear a motion? I move that we approve the $3,389,796 as displayed. Second. Okay, so Alan and Dick James. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Michelle? Me too. So 11 0. <laughs> Next one? Health and welfare program expenses. The total is eight hundred and twenty-seven thousand three hundred and nineteen dollars. Do I hear a motion? So moved. Carol? Second. Aye. Second. All those in favor? Yep. Excuse Aye. me. I'm quite yep. oh, that's not what's so the okay. I'm gonna I'm gonna You're raise gonna my hand. <laughs> All right. Gonna, okay, right. so, so all those in favor. Thank you. Sorry. So are we voting? Yes. yes. Yeah. All those in favor? Michelle? Yes. Okay, so 11 nothing. Uh, next one, public works program expenses. Total is $1,561,060. Do I hear a motion? So moved. So moved. Second. Okay. Did that go? Oh, I got Dimitri to move. Who seconded? Second. Oh, oh. second down here. Okay. Yeah. David Betts. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Michelle? Yes. 11 nothing. Next is recreation, culture, contingency, and miscellaneous program expenses. And the total is, we're going to go with the $680,214. Right. Right. This is where we took the twenty thousand for the health okay. insurance. Okay. Yep. So six hundred eighty thousand two hundred fourteen dollars. So moved. Second. Second. Rick and Bob. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Michelle. Yes. Eleven zero. Okay. And capital expenses and reserve account and debt service payments. So this is where the money for the bins is. So you can see capital special projects that would turn that number of 535,000 into a number that is 295,000. And so it would change the total into 3,317,000. dollars yeah. If someone were to make that motion instead of the three five five seven two eight zero, all right. Let's start with the the higher dollar amount. 
and see what we get for a vote. I'll move with the three million five fifty seven three hundred and eighty nine. Second. Okay. Yep. Yeah. So we get a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Michelle? Yes. All those opposed? So it will be nine to two. Is that it? Okay. Are we done? That's it. Are we done? Well, now we have budget two. I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> so we do not have a meeting next week? No. You do not have a meeting next week. But will we have a meeting the week after? Are we going to? You, you will need to, we should meet, you should come in on April 13th so we can vote on the war and articles. Yeah. Okay. Just you I think no, all of us. No, all of us. The budget board. Six o'clock. Yeah, six o'clock. At 6 p.m. So April 13th, 6 o'clock. Because then we definitely need a quorum because we'll be voting on some of the warrant articles. So. Motion to adjourn. Second. Second. All those in favor. Aye. Uh, Yay. We are adjourned. See you. Thank you. See you as well.